Charles L. Sonny Liston was born on 1930 and died on December 30, 1970 into a sharecropping family that farmed the poor land of Morledge Plantation near Johnson Township, St. Francis County, Arkansas. His father, Tobe Liston, was in his mid-40s when he and his wife, Helen Baskin, who was almost 30 years younger than Tobe, moved to Arkansas from Mississippi in 1916. Helen had one child before she married Tobe, and Tobe had 13 children with his first wife. Tobe and Helen had 12 children together, Sonny was the second youngest child. He was nicknamed the Big Bear and was an American professional boxer who competed from 1953 to 1970. A dominant contender of his era, he became the world heavyweight champion in 1962 after knocking out Floyd Patterson in the first round, repeating the knockout the following year in defense of the title, in the latter fight he also became the inaugural WBC heavyweight champion. Often regarded as one of the greatest boxers of all time, Liston was particularly known for his immense strength, formidable jab, long reach, toughness, and is widely regarded as the most intimidating man in the history of the sport. Although Liston was widely regarded as unbeatable, he lost the title in 1964 to Muhammad Ali, then known as Cassius Clay, who entered as an 8-1 underdog. Liston retired in his corner due to an inflamed shoulder. Controversy followed with claims that Liston had been drinking heavily the night before the fight and had entered the bout with a lame shoulder. In his 1965 rematch with Ali, Liston suffered an unexpected first-round knockout that led to unresolved suspicions of a fix. He was still a world-ranked boxer when he died under mysterious circumstances in 1970. The Ring magazine ranks Liston as the 10th greatest heavyweight of all time, while boxing writer Herb Goldman ranked him second and Richard O'Brien, senior editor of Sports Illustrated, placed him third. Alfie Potts Harmer in the Sportster also ranked him the third greatest heavyweight and the sixth greatest boxer at any weight. Liston was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1991. Sonny Liston stood 6 feet 1 inch, 1.85 meters, tall, and his powerful physique was complemented by an exceptionally long reach of 84 inches, 2.13 meters. Sonny Liston boasted an estimated net worth of about $100,000 million at the time of his passing in 1970. About Sonny Liston personal life and death. Liston married Geraldine Chambers in St. Louis, Missouri, on September 3, 1957. Geraldine had a daughter from a previous marriage, and the Listons subsequently adopted a boy from Sweden. Liston biographer Paul Gallender claims that Liston fathered several children, though none with his wife. Geraldine remembered her husband as, great with me, great with the kids. He was a gentleman. Although largely illiterate through lack of schooling, though not enumerate, Liston was a more complex and interesting individual than has often been acknowledged. Former light heavyweight champion Jose Torres said, I have never met an athlete in baseball, basketball or football who is smarter, more intelligent than Sonny Liston. Liston was found dead by his wife, Geraldine, in their Las Vegas home on January 5, 1971. On returning home from a two-week trip, Geraldine had smelled a foul odor emanating from the main bedroom and on entering saw him slumped up against the bed, a broken foot bench on the floor. Authorities theorized that he was undressing for bed when he fell over backward with such force that he broke the rail of the bench. Geraldine called Liston's attorney and his doctor, but did not notify the police until two to three hours later. Following an investigation, Las Vegas police concluded there were no signs of foul play and declared Liston's death a heroin overdose. It was common knowledge that Sonny was a heroin addict, said Sergeant Caputo, one of the investigating police officers, the whole department knew about it. The date of death listed on his death certificate is December 30, 1970, which police estimated by judging the number of milk bottles and newspapers around the front door of the property. Coroner Mark Herman said traces of heroin byproducts were found in Liston's system, but not in amounts large enough to have caused his death. Also, scar tissue, possibly from needle marks, was found in the bend of Liston's left elbow. The toxicology report said his body was too decomposed for the tests to be conclusive. Officially, Liston died of lung congestion and heart failure. He had been suffering from hardening of the heart muscle and lung disease before his death. Liston had been hospitalized in early December, complaining of chest pains. Liston was buried at Paradise Memorial Gardens in Las Vegas, Nevada. The grave's marker plate bears the dedication, a man. About Sonny Liston professional career. Liston signed a contract in September 1953, proclaiming, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. The only backers willing to put up the necessary money for him to turn professional were close to underworld figures, and Liston supplemented his income by working for racketeers as an intimidator enforcer. 
The connections to organized crime were an advantage early in his career but were later used against him. Liston made his professional debut on September 2, 1953, knocking out Don Smith in the first round in St. Louis, where he fought his first five bouts. He was 6 feet 1 inch, 1.85 meters, and had an exceptionally powerful physique, with a disproportionately long reach at 84 inches, 2.13 meters. His fists measured 15 inches, 38 centimeters around, the largest of any heavyweight champion. Sports Illustrated writer Mort Charnick said his hands looked like cannonballs when he made them into fists. Liston's noticeably more muscular left arm, crushing left jab and powerful left hook lent credence to the widely held belief that he was left-handed, although he fought in an orthodox stance. In 1958, Liston returned to boxing. He won eight fights that year, six by knockout. He also went with a new manager in 1958, Joseph Pep Barone, who was a frontman for mobsters Frankie Carbo and Frank Blinky Palermo. The year 1959 was a banner one for Liston, after knocking out contender Mike DeJohn in six rounds he faced Cleveland Williams, a fast-handed fighter who was billed as the hardest-hitting heavyweight in the world against whom he showed durability, power and skill, nullifying Williams' best work before stopping him in the third round. This victory is regarded by some as Liston's most impressive performance. He rounded out the year by stopping Nino Valdez and Willie Besmanoff. Liston became the number one contender in 1960, but the handlers of world heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson refused to give him a shot at the title because of Liston's links to organized crime. While Liston began working into shape with hopes for a heavyweight title shot, he also continued his criminal behavior. Two more arrests, for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest and another for impersonating a cop, led to Liston being suspended by the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission on July 14, 1961. The suspension was honored in all states. Ironically, Patterson's manager, Cuz D'Amato, associated with racketeers and had his manager's license revoked by the New York State Athletic Commission for alleged misconduct in connection with the Floyd patterson Ingemar Johansson title fight in June 1959. Patterson finally signed to meet Liston for the world title on September 25, 1962, in Comiskey Park in Chicago. Leading up to the fight, Liston was an 8-5 betting favorite, although many picked Patterson to win. In an associated press poll, 64 of 102 reporters picked Patterson. Sports Illustrated predicted a Patterson victory in 15 rounds, stating, Sonny has neither Floyd's speed nor the versatility of his attack. He is a relatively elementary, one-track fighter. Former champions James J. Braddock, Jersey Joe Walcott, Ezid Charles, Rocky Marciano and Ingemar Johansson all picked Patterson to win. Muhammad Ali, at the time a rising contender named Cassius Clay, however, predicted a knockout by Liston in the first five rounds. Upon winning the world heavyweight title, Liston had a speech prepared for the crowd that friends had assured him would meet him at the Philadelphia airport. But upon arrival, Liston was met by only a handful of reporters and public relations staff. Writer Jack McKinney said, I watched Sonny. His eyes swept the whole scene. You could feel the deflation, see the look of hurt in his eyes. He had been deliberately snubbed. Philadelphia wanted nothing to do with him. People described Sonny's disappointment further, recalling his shoulders slumping and all joy being removed from his demeanor. This point, the absence of a crowd or parade upon his arrival, is marked by many as Sonny's abandonment of any hope of being accepted as a champion. From this point forward, he would play into the stereotypes that reporters bestowed on him, departing from any efforts to appear amiable and affectionate to the public. Patterson and Liston had a rematch clause in their contract. Patterson wanted a chance to redeem himself, so they met again on July 22, 1963, in Las Vegas. It was the first million-dollar purse with both fighters receiving $1,434,000 each. Patterson, a 4-1 betting underdog, was knocked down three times and counted out at 2-10 of the first round. The fight lasted for seconds longer than the first one. Liston's victory was loudly booed. The public is not with me. I know it, Liston said afterward. But they'll have to swing along until somebody comes to beat me. Liston made his second title defense on February 25, 1964, in Miami Beach, Florida against Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali. Liston was a heavy favorite. In a pre-fight poll, 43 of 46 sportswriters picked Liston to win by knockout. Odds makers gave Liston 8 colon 1 to win. Clay countered in verse, if you want to lose your money, then bet on Sonny. Liston was supremely confident of easily beating Clay, trained minimally for the fight and went ahead with it despite an injury to his left shoulder. 
Liston trained hard for the rematch, which was scheduled to take place November 13, 1964, in Boston. Time magazine said Liston had worked himself into the best shape of his career. However, there were again rumors of alcohol abuse in training. The extent to which Liston's heavy drinking and possible drug use may have contributed to his surprisingly poor performances against Ali is not known. After the second loss to Ali, Liston stayed out of the ring for more than a year. He returned with four consecutive knockout victories in Sweden between July 1966 and April 1967, all four co-promoted by former world heavyweight champion Ingemar Johansson. One of the victories was over Amos Johnson, Liston's former sparring partner, who had recently defeated British champion Henry Cooper. He was denied entry to the 1967 WBA tournament to find a successor to Ali who had been stripped of his title following his refusal to be drafted into the US military during the Vietnam War. Liston won his final fight, a tough but one-sided match against future world title challenger Chuck Wepner in June 1970. The bout was stopped after the ninth round due to cuts over both of Wepner's eyes. Wepner needed 72 stitches and suffered a broken cheekbone and nose. Wepner, who also fought George Foreman and Muhammad Ali, said after his career was over that Liston was the hardest puncher he faced. About Sonny Liston House. Sonny Liston, the world heavyweight boxing champion in November 1963, lived in Denver's Park Hill neighborhood on Monaco Parkway. His residence was in an otherwise segregated area, and it's fascinating to learn about the events that unfolded there. In a memorable incident, a young Cassius Clay, later known as Muhammad Ali, visited Denver to sign a contract for a fight with Liston. Ali's bus, boldly painted with slogans like, World's Most Colorful Fighter, Cassius Clay, and Sonny Liston Will Go in Eight, roamed through Denver's Five Points neighborhood, where residents watched in amazement. Ali playfully claimed he was bear hunting and declared that Liston was too ugly to be the champ, emphasizing that the champion should be as pretty as himself. Eventually, they found Liston's home on Monaco Parkway, and Clay's antics woke up the entire neighborhood. Liston, clad in polka-dotted pajamas and wielding a fireplace poker, confronted Clay. The police soon intervened, preventing a brawl. After losing his title to Ollie in a rematch in Lewiston, Maine, Liston sold the residence. Unfortunately, Liston's life took a tragic turn, and he died under mysterious circumstances in Las Vegas. His legacy remains intertwined with the colorful history of boxing, and his house in Denver holds memories of those intense moments between fighters. That is all we have for you today, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up, share to your friends, leave a comment and do not forget to subscribe.